When it comes to cognitive function, our brain can be a little bit of a mineral hog. It takes all kinds of different things to make the brain function. It takes sodium, it takes you know, the proper action potential to fire the neuron, to fire that whole signal, right? But one of the things that people overlook a lot is zinc. I've touted the benefits of magnesium when it comes down to brain function, helping the brain possibly stay more relaxed and things like that. But one of the things that needs to be addressed more is how zinc influences what's called glutamate. So let's go ahead and break down how a little bit of zinc may end up helping you feel a little bit more, I don't know, brainy when it comes down to cognitive function. Today's video is sponsored by Thrive Market. I definitely recommend you check them out. So they're an online membership-based grocery store. So if you're shopping for different kinds of foods to eat or you're going to the grocery store and you don't know what is good for what particular diet or whatever, Thrive Market makes it super easy. They have everything all in one place, ranging from keto to paleo, vegan. You can check a box and sort by it, gluten-free, sugar-free, and then it gets delivered right to your doorstep. Plus, they have sustainable meat and seafood options, so you can almost virtually do your entire grocery shopping through them these days. And then it's just super easy because it's at your doorstep in just two or three days. So there is a link down below if you wanna check them out and you can save 25% off your first order plus get a free gift, but you have to use that link that's down below in the description. So check them out after this video. We have to think of our brain like a computer, okay, in a lot of ways. And our computer has what's called RAM, right? So that RAM is that random access memory. And if you're a computer nerd, I'm not a computer nerd, but I know enough about them. That random access memory is just like the name implies. It's memory that is, can be randomly accessed. And the more randomly accessible memory that you have, the quicker your computer can potentially run because you can pull from that random access memory quicker, right? Well, in our human brains, we have something that's called spatial working memory. It, in essence, is kind of like RAM. It's like what is available at that point in time in terms of your memory, things that you know, things that you are aware of, that are readily accessible for articulation. I guess, you know, for lack of a better term, like when I'm doing videos and I am remembering information that I know from research studies, it's in my memory but it's also in my spatial working memory because I can pull from it on a whim to be able to articulate it to you. So that's what spatial working memory is. So how does zinc play a role in that? Well, we will get to this in one second. So there was a study that was published in the Journal of Neuropharmacology that found that zinc is very important and very prevalent in the presynaptic vesicles of what are called glutamatergic neurons. Now these glutamatergic neurons are what facilitate the whole action of glutamate. And to make it very simple, Glutamate is responsible for sort of the excitation of our brain in certain ways. I mean, we have two balances that we always try to play in. We have the glutamate scale and we have the GABA scale. And certain things like magnesium kind of influence GABA a little bit more, the relaxation effect of the brain, and certain things influence glutamate. Like MSG, for example, can really influence glutamate, monosodium glutamate, to the point where it's exciting the brain so much, right? We want a proper balance, but we want the proper regulation of how glutamate acts within the brain. So these glutamatergic neurons contain glutamate. So when it comes down to these neurons, zinc is very important for the storage, for the release, and for the uptake of these glutamate out of these glutamatergic neurons. So it's kind of like the like switch. It's like the motor that allows this to help occur. So without zinc, there's not as much potential like brain activity from a glutamate side of things. The American Journal of Clinical Nutrition had published a study that looked specifically at elderly people, and it found that elderly people that had a zinc deficiency ended up having lower cognitive function. Okay, that's cool. Well, correlation does not always equal causation. So we wanna look at a little bit more hard proof. And I've talked about this study in another video, but I think it's very relevant here. The British Journal of Nutrition published a study, took a look at 387 participants that were aged between 55 and 87. So they were older, and possibly had some cognitive decline. It was a randomized blind crossover design study, so a good study design. And they used a specific form of testing. In this case, it was the Cambridge Automated Neurophysical Test Battery, and they were able to measure their, well, spatial working memory like we talked about before. So they looked at them at baseline, they looked at them at three months and six months with either zero milligrams of zinc in a placebo, 15 milligrams of zinc, or 30 milligrams of zinc. They found that the more zinc there was, the larger the improvement in spatial working memory there was. So again, here we don't necessarily have a mechanistic action, but we have human proof, or at least human demonstration, that something is happening in people that are taking in zinc. So that's really interesting. Now, one thing that was noticed was as the zinc levels increased, attention 
span decreased ever so slightly. Now, this could simply be that you have like more excitation occurring, like a more of an excitatory response, and maybe that's just a shorter lived response because spatial working memory improved. So it's kind of like saying my computer has more memory, has more RAM, but it's like using so much energy, it gets exhausted faster. So maybe that's what's happening, but it's such a small decrease in the attention piece. I think if we factor in other minerals and good diet, we can probably counterbalance that a little bit. So one thing that I want you to do is try experimenting with a little bit of zinc. Just remember that zinc can cancel out copper, and if you go overboard in the zinc, it can have a negative effect. So I would recommend starting small, starting maybe 15, maybe 30 milligrams of zinc, see how you feel. Again, I'm not a doctor. This is what I would do personally for me, so maybe it's what you want to try out. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel, and I'll see you tomorrow.